How is it going, everyone? My name is Intoxible, and today I'm going to be discussing basically uh, the best spells for low-level wizards and bards when you're starting out. Um, this is just to give some fellow D&D uh, &D enthusiasts, uh, such as myself, and critters, um, I know there's a lot of you, um, the more or less the uh, information you need for low-level spells that will help you out uh, much better, uh, in my opinion. Uh, this is opinion-based, but I have played a lot of D&D, and uh, a lot of 5th edition, I've watched a lot of different things, and I just want to give my insight on what I think is, is better than better choices than most. So we'll start with wizards uh, and cantrips. So first, uh, right off the bat, you are a wizard. You are going to be seen and looked forward to for damage, uh, as well as utility in, in some rough situations. So I like to say... The top three cantrips that I would always take as a wizard, uh, for, first and foremost, Firebolt. Uh, Firebolt is an amazing cantrip that continues to go up in damage as you achieve levels. Um, and it's just... You're basically your bread and butter. It's what you're going to be doing uh, when you run out of other other options. Now, if you, with the other cantrips you take, you can also, if you think that things are going to get, um, basically, uh, like you're going to be fighting against things that are fire resistant or fire immune, uh, which immunity is rare in D and D, but it, it does exist. And if you think that's going to be the case, you could always go ray of frost as a secondary measure and just have both of those. But you typically don't need more than two different damage type cantrips in most situations but the nice thing is it's 1d10 damage on hit uh, and it goes up 2d10 at 5th level 3d10 at 11th level and 4d10 at 17th level so it maintains effectiveness as the game goes on so it's really nice um, the second cantrip I recommend uh, for which is utility based is message uh, think of it like a uh, D&D uh, Wi-Fi Twitter um, Yes, they have to be short messages, but uh, it does not require the person you are speaking to to have message to answer back. Uh, it is very good utility-based if you forget to ask somebody something or you need to send an important message. I recommend it tremendously uh, as a cantrip, um, and you can do it over and over and over. Uh, even though it requires one action and lasts until the end of the round, you can do it over and over and over. Um, the third cantrip I recommend, depending on your party, if you have humans or other races that are uh, night blind, I recommend light because it is not a concentration spell and you can just set it up to allow them to see in combat. Otherwise, they're at disadvantage on their all their attacks, which can suck. Um, or bonfire, which is nice because not only can it sh uh, give some light in situations, it can also burn the corpses of things that are otherwise uh, necessary. And yes, it is concentration, but it is nice in a sense that if you need to rest, um, you can snap on a bonfire to create a quick fire uh, and basically burn non-magic materials to in uh, turn... Uh, start a real fire, as well as uh, keeping people warm in cold situations. There's just the, the possibilities with that are endless. Um, I recommend one of those two, uh, not necessarily both of them. It just depends on what you want to do, because you could always start a fire with Firebolt or, you know, a, a adventurous kit or something along those lines. So let's move on to level one spells. The first level one spell that I personally feel all wizards should have is... Um, is uh, and also I think one of the most powerful level one spells in the game, and even one of the most powerful spells in general is shield. Uh, shield is amazing. Um, as a reaction, you can add five to your armor class, which is huge, uh, and you can do that until the end of your turn, uh, or the end of your next turn, and or I'm sorry, the start of your next turn. And the other nice thing is it is the only thing in the game that can block magic missile. Uh, because Magic Missile always hits within range, uh, and unless you are immune to force damage, uh, it is going to hit you, regardless of your armor class, regardless of anything. Shield can actually stop Magic Missile, and it is the only thing in existence that can stop Magic Missile. So it is, uh, aside from Counterspell, but uh, the only thing that that can stop an actual active coming Magic Missiles. Uh, 
so I recommend that tremendously. It is, I think it should be in every wizard's kit. Um, also when you're typically in the 12 to 13 armor range, um, and that's typically with mage armor, maybe 14, 15, if your dex is high enough, it essentially makes, it, it can essentially make your armor anywhere from 17, 18, 19 to 20, depending on your armor class, which is huge for a, a wizard. And although you shouldn't be getting hit for that one time that it does happen, you're covered. So moving on, uh, this spell should always be taken by a spellcaster in, uh, in your group. And that is identify. Identify is amazing. Uh, I, I think a lot of people don't realize the importance of it. Um, some DMs are really uh, lenient on this because people don't take the spell enough, and they basically just allow an Arcana check to tell you what a magic item is. I think in a lot of cases that's kind of BS, um, and, and the DM can do whatever they want. They are the the rule maker, but I think that an Arcana check should be able to tell you if something is magical, and it should give you an idea of the type of magic that it might produce, like enchantment, evocation, um, you know, whatever. Maybe even to let you know that it's a plus one or plus two um, prior to attunement. Um, and in some cases, I would say even allow you to know if it is a cursed item, if the curse is low level enough and the high and the roll is high enough. Uh, however, identify tells you what the item is. And it's think of it kind of like the identify scrolls in Diablo, if you ever played that. Um, and the nicest thing about it is it can be cast as a ritual spell. So you can take 10 minutes to concentrate on the spell and the item. And in turn, you can, uh, without using a spell slot, you can identify the item, which is amazing. So, uh, you and you don't have to worry about using the spell slot. Uh, the one downside, if you have a DM that a lot makes you use gold-related uh, like materials... Um, or materials in general. I in my games I don't unless they are gold specific materials like like diamonds or it says a hundred gold or this or that. I do not make people have to have materials. I think it's just too much to keep up with and it kind of makes the game a little less fun. Um, but that's again opinion based. Some people are hardcore and prefer to do it. And to each their own. More power to you. But identify is should be in every spellcaster's kit. It's a level one spell. Uh, you can do it as a ritual. Doesn't even take a spell slot if you have the ten minutes to concentrate on it, and um, it can save a lot of time, also a lot of gold in getting other people to identify items for you, uh, which is usually in most D and D games an expensive practice. So uh, next, uh, another thing that's really good is alarm. Uh, it can be set again as a ritual. Um, so 10 minutes of concentration and you don't have to worry about a spell slot. And it makes it to where in certain cases, if you're sleeping in a room with only one door, um, you don't have to worry about having anybody stay up to watch, uh, to keep a watch, because it is basically uh, going to wake you up if it alarms. Um, as long as you're not put to sleep by some kind of magical means, it will wake you up. Um, Let's see. And in most cases, uh, you would wake up from certain... Like, if, you're, if your passive perception is 20 or higher, um, the faintest of sounds and whispers based on the D&D &D rules can wake you up. So it's very, very nice. Um, okay, so that's it for Wizards. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, so once again, let's just put here on the screen, that's f uh, for cantrips. I recommend Firebolt, Message... And light or bonfire, depending on your party. If you have a blind part, blind, night blind party, I recommend light. If you have a non night blind party, I recommend bonfire because it can still have very many uh, good uses. So, um, and then for level one spells, I recommend shield and identify highly, and then alarm. Um, those are the basically, the, in my opinion, the best cantrips and level ones for wizards. So let's move on to bards. Um, bards is one of my favorite classes in the game. I will say that in the beginning of the game, bards typically uh, are ninety-five percent utility. Um, and if you are, if you go, um, not talking about xanathers in this, but if you go, um, basically, uh, Valor bard you are going to be utility f until level 10 when you can get uh, additional magical secrets and take from other spell trees. Um, if you don't go Valor and you go Lore, 
um, you get magical secrets, I believe, at level six, and again at level ten, um, and that makes it that makes you a lot more uh, damage based if you choose to go that route or utility based. But bards, don't get me wrong, bards can still dish out a bunch of damage. Uh, I think they with their um, the, the ability to double proficient, uh, the master, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, jack of all trades, um, you essentially are a lot higher, well, you're going to be higher in every uh, skill check than any other class uh, overall, so very, very good. Um, they are charisma-based, so they are very good at typically being deceit, uh, deceitful um, and deceptive, and... Uh, it's just one of my favorite classes to play. So moving on, um, for bards, uh, once again, in cantrips, I recommend light if you have a night blind party. Um, if you do not, maybe not as much, uh, n not as necessary. It just depends on uh, what you're going to be doing. Um, mending. Uh, again, you are seen in the beginning of the game as a utility-based class. If you find something that is broken or something that you need to be able to mend that is... Um, not organic, you can uh, basically use the mending spell to fix the item. Say you have a bridge that the uh, what's holding the uh, the ropes against the bridge is, is shattered, you can mend it. Um, think of it like kind of like Oculus Reparo from Harry Potter, if you're familiar with that, when Hermione heal, uh, basically fixes his glasses with a swoop of her wand. Um, essentially, it's a cantrip. So, very, very useful spell. Um, depending on your game. If your game is very story-driven, lots of role-playing, mending is primarily used in role-playing scenarios, not in combat scenarios. Not to say that it can't. Um, and I have seen mending be the difference between a party uh, dying and surviving in a puzzle situation. Um, once again, another one I recommend... So that's mending. Oh. Another spell I recommend is message. Um, once again probably one of the best utility spells in the game quick twitter message out uh saves a lot of time makes it to where you don't have to worry about going to back to it uh, certain people to tell, tell them something and it's just really nice to have it's it's basically the D, D cell phone uh essentially what it is so very useful um now i think every class in the game should have some type of damage cantrip so for bards i recommend either thunderclap um or vicious mockery uh, Vicious Mockery is good because, it, it like just like Guiding Bolt, it has damage plus utility. Now, Vicious Mockery's damage is nowhere compared to, to Guiding Bolt. But the nice thing about it is it does a little bit of damage if they fail to save. Uh, which I want to say it is a Wisdom save off the top of my head. I'll look it up for us. Um, but if they, if they fail to save, they take Psychic Damage. Which, Psychic Damage is typically... Uh, one of the hardest damages to be resistant to that I've found in this game. Um, yeah, Wisdom Saving Throw against their spell DC and 1d4 Psychic Damage. Um, and then the nice thing about it is it gives them disadvantage on their next attack if they fail the save. If they don't fail the save, uh, then it just doesn't do anything, which is unfortunate. Um, so... More or less, uh, the nice thing about it as well is it increases with levels. So 5th, 11th, and 17th, uh, it goes up 1, 1d4 each level, or each of each uh, tier of those levels. So um, basically 5th is 2d4, 11th is 3d4, and 17th is 4d4. So it can still be very useful in-game, uh, especially to get that sweet, sweet disadvantage, because sometimes disadvantage can be the difference between a party wiping and a party not wiping. I've seen it many, many times. Uh, now that's cantrips, which we didn't specify that, I apologize. Let's move on to level 1 spells for bards. Now I recommend 2 more than any others. Uh, you are seen in, in the beginning as a utility based class and, and what I would also call an off healer. Healing word is amazing because it is a 60 foot range healing spell that goes off of your uh, a 1d4 at base level plus your spell casting ability modifier so being charisma based if you are lucky enough to roll high enough or uh, be high enough in charisma or wisdom um or whatever your spell casting ability modifier is based on what you're taking in this case charisma you can literally uh, heal somebody for upwards of eight points, which at low level is dang near half their life. So uh, the nice thing is, 
you can do that as well as, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best things you can use because if somebody falls, it's a quick way to get somebody back into the fray um, and allow them on their turn as a bonus action, depending on what your DM uh, dictates, uh, to take a healing potion and go back up even more and basically be combat ready again uh, with their action. So I, I think it's a must-have. Um, I think the same thing for clerics. Healing word is a must-have. Uh, identify. I can't specify enough how important the spell is and how many people forget to take it. It can be used as a ritual once again, and it is uh, basically the bread and butter of figuring out what magical items are, because in the beginning you typically don't have enough gold or the ability to identify items. Again, I don't think Arcana checks should be able to identify items. I think it should just let somebody know if it's magic and what it's, if it may or may not be cursed and its variations. But I do not think, um, if it's a low level curse, I do not think that identify, um, gets enough respect, uh, in the D and D community and games in general. Um, so those are the two, um, those are two of the the more utility based. Uh, we are going to go one more utility based. Cure wounds. Um, I know this is starting to sound like oh, a bard's not a healer. Uh, in a lot of cases, a bard is a utility class, and utility is healing. So bards, I do think, should go cure wounds. Um, I think it is uh, a great spell. It's a one d eight plus your spell casting ability modifier at base level. It can be cast at higher levels for an additional d eight for every level above it, um, and uh, it's just. Very, very good. It's it's something that it's really good to use on yourself. It's also really good to use on other players. Um, you know, before fights, in between fights, after fights, the possibilities are endless. It can be cast at higher skill levels once or higher slot levels once you unlock them, and it's just really good to have. Uh, the last spell, um, I think you should definitely have a damage type level one spell uh, in case you need to be in case your key point at that at that point of the battle is to do damage dissonant whispers not only is dissonant whispers really good to use um to uh what i would call help help your uh, spell other spellcasters kite as well as get something big off your back if they fail to save um it forces them to run away in f- ba- basically in a type of fear uh, it's a 60 foot range so it has really good range it does 3d 3d6 psychic damage when they fail to save um, which is amazing. Uh, and if they f- if they don't fail the save, uh, they basically still take half damage. So you still get damage out of it. So it's not a wasted slot, and uh, it can be cast at higher levels, and it increases one d six for each uh, spell level above it, which is huge. And uh, one of the other things is again the creature doesn't move into an obviously dangerous ground such as a fire or a pit, uh, which sucks, but you know it makes sense. On a su- it does- they don't lose track of who they are; they just don't want to be near you. And on a successful save, they take half as much damage. Um, a deafened creature automatically succeeds the save, so they have to be able to hear you. So if they if they have uh, tremor sense and they don't hear normal words, it won't work. Um, now, basically, it has to use its reaction to move as far away as possible. So it essentially forces them to use their reaction. So they can't do an attack of opportunity in the same round. They can't counter spell or anything like that unless they use it on dissonant whispers. And it forces them as a reaction to move away from you. So not only are you helping other classes in the game kite, you're also uh, damaging plus utility. And that's the name of the game. You, any, any spell that does damage plus utility strongly outweighs a spell that just does damage. Uh, and I can't stress that enough. So Dissonant Whispers is definitely a level 1 spell that I recommend Bard should have. Um, now, on this list here, based on the amount of level spells you get, if you had to choose three from this list, I'm going to say Healing Word, Identify, and Dissonant Whispers. Uh, Cure Wounds can can be cut off the list in that case for that situation. Um, let's go ahead and get the... Uh, we already did, but level one. Uh, on this one, shield and identifier a must. Um, you can even go as a damage spell if you want to add one in there for wizards. You can go magic missiles. Uh, always hits unless they have shield, which we went over. And it's just in general uh, guaranteed damage. Uh, at base level, it's one d four plus one per missile, three missiles, and for every level above it, it does an additional missile. So it can be. Uh, very, very strong. 
Uh, I mean, it's even worth casting it at higher levels just because the dar- guaranteed aspect of the damage. Uh, I, I would say it's 98% guaranteed. There are some things. But, um, yeah, so basically at second level or higher, the spell creates one more dart for each spell level above it. So what's really nice about that um, is say you, I mean, say you cast it at level 9, which is probably unlikely, but um, if something was low and you just wanted to guarantee that it wouldn't succeed a save or anything like that, which it can't with Magic Missile, I mean, you essentially have the level 1, which is 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, Magic Missiles. Um, and that's pretty damn huge. Um, so, And actually, I believe it's 12, so I believe I miscounted that. So it's 12 uh, Magic Missiles, es- essentially, for the ability to do that, and that's huge. I mean, that's more or less, the base damage alone of that is 48 force damage, uh, or no, it's not. I'm sorry. The ba- base damage of that is essentially um, in, in, up to upwards of dice alone, up to 48 damage plus an additional 12, which could be 60. Now, the chances of you rolling 12 d4s is not going to happen. So let's just say on average, um, you rolled ones on all of them plus that. It's still 24 points of guaranteed damage, even with the lowest roll. But that's also unlikely. Um, so. More or less, uh, it's something I I strongly recommend, Um, and I hope this helped some of you guys, especially new players, and I hope you enjoyed this, and if you do, please subscribe, as well as uh, comment. Uh, I'm open to some criticism. I... (laughs) Critter-cism? So, um, I do more than appreciate it, uh, and try to be, you know, try to keep it on point and uh, keep uh, you know toxicity out of it, but uh, I'm more than happy to discuss D and D. I'm also more than happy to help any DMs that need it. Uh, feel free to message me um, on Facebook. Uh, my first name is Ryan. Last name is R E I S S. You will see me all over. It's pronounced Reese. You will see me all over uh, Facebook uh, on on the uh, Critical Role fan club. Uh, I am a huge critter. I've seen every single episode of Critical Role some multiple times. Uh, I absolutely love the show. Matthew Mercer is my idol. He is what made me become the DM that I am. Um, And it's just something that's very close and dear to my heart. So I am always willing to help and answer questions. And there's a lot of people who will more or less... um, basically be willing to help you and all you have to do is ask for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a really good time playing D and D and enjoy everything about it. Um, it is in my opinion, the best game ever made. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please like, and subscribe. And I hope there's more to come. Thank you and have a good day.